are we ready for our demonstration with Dean? Um, yeah, I think, Dean, are you ready? We can start anytime you guys want to. Well, all right, I'll bring you up now then. All right, well, let me put my tea over here so I don't get chips in it. You get chips and everything else. In this shop, you're right. Been able to get out here just been able to get out here just long enough to uh, make a mess and not very much time for cleaning here lately. So uh, it is a bit of a mess. Well, you know that that the shavings are a pad, so if you drop something, it won't break. Well, that's what what I was thinking. You know, just a little benefit there, and it's cushioned under your feet, so you know that way you don't get a bad back. All right, guys. Uh, what we're talking about doing, yeah, let's see, pull that around and I've got this on the wrong. Uh oh, got to be nighttime. Lost your camera. Yeah, try that. Hit That's the right. wrong button there. There we go. So what we're talking about doing is these little boxes. Now, we saw some boxes earlier that were really nice and really detailed and one of the things that brenda talked about is they didn't this this didn't necessarily line up well i came up with this or i saw it i don't know where i came up with it but i started doing it for the craft shows so that i would have something that was a little quicker to make and a little i could sell for a little bit less uh, because a lot of folks if they see it that impulse buy They'll buy it in a hurry. So let me just show you guys some of these that I've done. This one's fairly simple. Sometimes I'll put a little bead on the end of them. Sometimes I'll just round them off. Um, this is one of my favorites, just a little bead in the middle. The nice thing about that too is if you don't notice, am I still there? You're there, you're good. Okay. Yep. Good to go. Uh, I lost my view, so let me see. We're looking at your chuck right now. Yeah, we're on your overhead camera. All right. Let me get this. Okay, well. Okay, hopefully that's back where I can see it now, too. Sorry about that. I guess I bumped against the mouse when I was down here. Anyway, I do several of those like that. One of the ones that I don't have right now that's real popular is just straight on the sides and squared off on the ends. It's amazing. The simplest form is one of the ones that goes first. So let's talk about this just a little bit. We'll get started. You'll notice that I marked the center here on both ends. And then I'll come in and take, what was that, was a question there? Yeah, how big the blank? Oh, that was a question about a coring system for McNaughton's. Okay. All right, so I'll take the little center punch or an awl or something and just, uh, Go ahead and pop that in there. And basically what I do is just just like so. And then that gives me something that's gonna fit on my live center, my tailstock, so I can get it centered back up when I put it back on here. So let's go ahead and stick one in the chuck. What I do is I push it all the way back in. Now I do cut these very specifically to make sure they're square and I make sure the ends are square. <laughs> so once I get that in there fairly snug,
have a template, basically it's six inches long, the blank six inches long. And I come back an inch from each end. And then I've got my marks here where I'm going to part it apart in the center. All right, and you'll notice there's bandsaw cuts in that. That way I can flip it over and use it either side, I know where I'm at. So let's take a, a pencil here and I know I need to part it right about there, okay? If I make a mark all the way across there, on most wood, I can see that when it's turning. Go ahead and get my face shield on there. And remember what Jeff was talking about, about starting your lathe up slow, giving it a spin before you start, making sure everything's good. There's no reason to start it off fast, folks. By the way, can y'all hear me okay? Fine. Yes. Good deal. I know sometimes you put these face shields on, you can't hear people anymore. I hear that all the time on demos, but, uh, you know, I go ahead and wear mine. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this thin parting tool, about a sixteenth of an inch. We're going to come in slow down just a little bit. We're going to come in. We're just going to part that off, and now we have two pieces. The next step is we're going to bring a 5 8 inch Forstner bit in. You folks see the blue tape? If anybody watched the video when it first went up, my address went out for the world. One of the Forstner bits always take to our club retreat. So I'll make sure that my name's on everything. Now we're going to drill in with this Forstner bit just to the back of this black line. A lot of the Forstner bits you'll see have that little recess in there. Well, that seems to be just about perfect on this one. And if I measure that, it comes out to be three eighths of an inch. Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't measuring to the right spot there. Hang on guys. Didn't think that was right when I said it. It comes out to be a half inch. So we've got the lathe turning at about 500 RPMs. And we're just going to drill right into that real slow. Not that big a hole, but no sense of getting in a rush, right? The heat build is what kills you if you go too fast. Yes. And especially if you're drilling a, a deeper hole, it can really... Uh, cause you problems and and the heat can create problems for your finished product after you get it done. Okay, so we're gonna drill in and remember we're working on the top piece here. So we're gonna drill in about an inch and I've got that marked on the twist drill bit. The Forstner bit was a five eighths, this is a half inch. So we're just going to go ahead and pull that and push that right on in there. And that's all we need to do there. What's the speed on your lathe for drilling? Uh, we're 
we're sitting at about 500 right now, Captain. Give or take a little bit. Uh, the uh, the digital readout went out on my one way. Does yours still work? I uh, never had one. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> How fast does your lathe go? About that fast. About that fast. How fast does it need to go? Okay, so remember I said I put a, a center mark on the end of that blank? That's what's going in towards the chuck. But it doesn't line up with anything. Mm -hmm. You're right, it doesn't. Wow. Remember, Captain, when I said I wanted something I could do really fast? And remember oh, when man. Brenda said they didn't always line up perfect? Well. Oh, no, we're doing something for Brenda? Yeah. This is all for Brenda, man. OK. Brenda needs all the help she can get. <laughs> So one of the things when I, uh, before I start drilling this, you'll see that little nub there. One of the things we can do is just come in with a skew, knock that little nub off and then take the tip of the skew and just make ourselves just a little bit of digger. And what that does, is it gives that drill bit some place to start. Keeps it from walking. Exactly. Uh, is that a brad point or a standard one? That is a brad point. Okay. There's no reason you couldn't do it with a standard. Uh, no, don't. I, I'm not arguing. Not a brad point is the way to go. I love them. But I just don't want anybody out there that doesn't have a set to think that they can't do it without them. And some of you folks may see me with my hand on the uh, Jacob's chuck. If you're drilling with a Jacob's chuck, it's always best to keep your hand on it. You do not want that thing coming loose and starting to spin on you. And there we go. So now the turn is if you notice this bit is not clogged up with shavings because it's sharp and he took it slow we went slow if you get a bunch of baked up stuff in here that's real solid and you got to pry it out two things your lathe is going too fast and you're pushing it in too fast remember it's cutting it's cutting yeah, that's also, all he's doing you also don't use your fingers to clean the shavings out use a brush yeah Absolutely. Sounds like a man with a sounds like a man that can't stand splinters. What size blank did you start with, Dean? Was that a pen blank size? This this was actually one inch, and uh, and I basically cut it off. I had some bowl blanks that bust that uh, sat there too long and kind of cracked up a little bit. So I'm using them to make handles and stuff like that. So. I just ripped it one inch square on my bandsaw. There is no reason you couldn't go with the bigger bubble blank. It'd be a little tighter, but uh, you know, with basically five eighths center and you got a three quarter inch on most of those bubble blanks. So it could be done. Okay, thanks. Okay, so remember this little thing? This is the middle. We got a place to draw us a line right there. And why do you folks think we might need a line in there? 
I think that's recessed for the top to fit down on. Show exactly. Her. We're gonna put us. We're gonna make us a little tenon on that, and uh, make it to where it'll fit in the other end. So, go ahead and get this thing back going. We're gonna turn the speed up a little bit on this. Now remember, folks, we are spindle turning, so we can get away with a little more speed. And that mark. I'm just making sure it's where I want it with the skew, okay? And then I'm going to come in and just do a feeling cut. And again, as I raise the handle up, as I raise the handle up, just try that. As I raise the handle up, I'm pushing it in. It's kind of a rocking motion. Let's bring that down just a little bit. Did I do okay turning that off before I move this tool wrist, Jeff? Yes. Yeah. Is he all right? We all think we can get away with that, but just uh, be safe and make sure you're, uh, you're not taking chances, okay? And you'll notice I'm making a little bit of a bevel on this. So let's stop it. <laughs> and let's check and see if it fits. Okay, you see me turning that a little bit? If you look there, now we have burnishing. Here's the tip. Do not take away the burnishing. If you do, it's too <laughs> loose. All right. Brenda, pay attention to that. Brenda. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to come in. And we're just going to bring the rest of that. Let's see. That may be all we need right there. Let's check. Now we had a question on chat about the the depth the sizes of the holes. Land put that in there. Land, I hope this now helps you um, because um, he had a question about the advantage of drilling the five eighths hole and a half inch hole instead of drilling a five eighths hole for full depth. No, do a cross section of this thing right now, Land, and you'll see that there's no voids. You've got a half inch sleeve all the way through, and the five eighths gives you the shoulder and the and the, the mortise and a tenon to make the connection. Thank you, Captain. That's exactly right. And folks, at this point, we've got the top fitted on to the bottom. Okay, it's tight. In fact, you might have a little trouble taking it off of there. But don't worry about that. Now, right now, let me, let me hold you up. If you were to, to, to turn that, the, the, the cap end of it, if you were to turn it 90 degrees right now, would the sides still line up? What I'm, what I'm asking, is anything out of round? Can you show, if you did that, would anything be out, be out around? Folks it, would say. It could possibly be, and a lot of times it is. So if I turn it that way, uh, just slightly side to side. Now that's 180. That... Yeah, that's that's slightly off. Yes, mm -hmm. that's what mine was doing. Or is still okay. Doing. Now, if you want to do it and you don't want to get that, don't put the center marks in the end. Cut you a tenon on the end and put it in a chuck. Hmm? Hmm? But while you're cutting the tenon, fitting it in the chuck, I'm starting my second one. And again, this is something that I'm going to do for somebody to put toothpicks in, put their pills in, uh, put their money in, whatever, and stick in their pocket and carry around. 
is something that I want to be nice, but it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? So we've got this far, and I believe we're turned back to, yeah, we're, we're back where we need to be. So, well, let's see, I don't think I tightened that down this time. I guess I'll find out very shortly. I probably did. Hang on, guys. I'm going to walk around the other side of the lathe. Well, where did that thing go? Well, these get that done, folks. I want to remind you to turn to worldwidewoodturners.org. You can get free membership into this club. All you need to do is go to our website click on any part you want and that's where you're going to get access it is free wow you just clean that up best tip of the whole night right here we sell those at all the box stores and they're for picking up roofing nails when they do the roof it's a big old magnet if you drop something on the other side of the lathe or in shavings it picks it up i kept losing mine like that until i stuck it on a metal door to the shop there you go. <laughs> what kind My of hook is on the garage door opener? Yeah, the garage door railings. There I used to today. <laughs> yeah, but wait till you drop a uh, brass part. Yeah, it doesn't work so good on those. Or some stainless steels that don't do good there. Kept thinking about an old fishing buddy that got some magnetic signs to put on the side of his aluminum boat. Couldn't figure out why they wouldn't stick. <laughs> <laughs> you should nice the, looking signs. I have a Ford F-150. And uh, after the freeze, I had a water leak. So I was concerned that the, uh, that I had a uh, freeze plug that messed up on me. So rather than taking a chance of trying to drive it to the dealership, I had them come out and pick it up with a wrecker. And uh, they got it all hooked up and they got their lights out and they decided to put the lights on the hood. Well, they're magnetic lights. The F-150s 2017 forward are all aluminum. <laughs> that kid couldn't figure out why they wouldn't stick. So finally, he got tired of trying on that and decided to put them on top of the cab. I'm like, buddy, that's not going to work a lot better for you. Okay, so what we have now is we have the piece centered up. What's the headstock drive? What are you using? That's just a little step, step center. Okay. Uh, in fact, it's fairly new to me because I was, I've was i been working on some smaller stuff and everything I had has one inch drive. So I was running into problems. Now, guys, you'll notice that that thing's shorter already. Well, remember, we took a cut out here and then we took about a three eighths cut that's now pushed up in here. So the top of this actually goes up into here now. Everybody follow me? So I thought a mortise is going into the tenant. The tenant is going so, to the mortise part. So the part that we want to be our top is right about here. And where we want our bottom is right about here. Now we left a lot of a lot of space there that we can use for design and manipulating that and decide what we want it to look like. And uh, let's see, let's do uh, 
Let's just do something simple, something like this, okay? Y'all okay with that? Fine. Good deal. All the tools they need and a putt piece of wire. Heck, that's good. Did uh, Did Brenda say we needed to use a spindle roughing gouge? Uh, Kim, Kim did. Oh, Kim did, okay. In a little while, we're going to speak with Randy Smith. He's got an idea for Chuck Keys, and we'll share that with you folks in a few minutes. We're going to continue this. With Dean Grimes, who's got an awesome website, and he's uh, got a lot of videos on YouTube. Everything you see here, you'll probably see on YouTube. And it's uh, that's how we get our demonstrations. Again, we just... Uh... Not doing anything fancy, we're just sliding back and forth. And for the new folks out there, you'll notice as I'm cutting this out, I'm not moving my arm. All right? Let your body flow with that. You get a lot smoother cuts. So we've still got one rough side there. Let's go ahead and bring that on down. Okay, folks, we're live. Rut row. That's what happens. <laughs> Rut row. Oops. That's what happens when uh, That's okay. when things don't work out the way you want them to. Yeah, that's one I know is out of square to begin with, so let's grab another one. Uh, this is on a closed circuit. Kim, did you see Paul Barnes' recent bowl catastrophe? Yeah, he um, actually um, text messaged me a picture of it in his hand when it had happened. And I was like, oh, okay? no. And yeah, he's okay. He's fine. Um, it was, he started, if you notice, he started to get almost to making a funnel club and what yeah, happened no. was the bottom of it was so very weak because it was so thin so he, when he came in to scrape those sides that it busted at the very bottom where the mortise was so if you start hearing that hollow sound it's probably not best i'm not criticizing him for doing what he did by no means it's not my place but i'm just saying it's probably best to not to continue if you start hearing that hollow especially with mortises because that'll happen with a mortise obviously um if you come running up them size sides with any tool the first place it's going to give is that bottom and it will shatter like that because it's the bottom that's that's weak i know by experience <laughs> oh okay i thought you read about that okay <laughs> same thing sure goes for harmonics at the side when you're up at the rim that's yeah yes harmonic. exactly it's starts walking it starts flexing on you and then you get added vibration and then it bounces back hits that tool and blows up on you yes i, I always i learned that the hard way and even with dried woods i would always finish my rims um first you know doing all my scraping and everything else and then continue because having that meat in the bowl helps you know keep the rim of it more sturdy and if you work that way and i learned that with wet wood but i'd even do it with my dry um you'll have less of that looks like a hammered mark on your rims whenever you go back to to scrape them so i kind of you know everybody has their own techniques because they learn from their own experiences and i think those experiences are very handy <laughs> very very handy yes Okay, what we're going to do is just set the screw and do a V-cut right here on the knee. Again on this end. The folks, if you're just joining us, um, the pen box that we, or I call the pen box, uh, that we started turning uh, uh, departed the lathe. So now we have a, a, a piece of 
a stock that um, would be very similar to what we started with. And we're going to continue the demonstration that way. Okay. And so this little spot right here, that's where our uh, two cents together at. Right? Did your mic move? It's a little harder to hear you all of a sudden. Is that better? Not really. Not really. Better, but it's still muffled. Testing, testing, the shows that I'm putting out for volume here. Um, but y'all can hear me as well? We hear you. It's just a little more, what is muffled more than it was earlier, but we can continue at this rate. Okay. Yeah, I don't know now you see, that. we had some better sound just a second ago. Oh no, I'm sorry, that was cash. There's a baby. Oh, baby. Don't apologize. Well, I just lost him. Don't commentate. <laughs> okay. And so all we're doing really at this point on this one is we're just battling that baby again. Not anything uh, difficult. It doesn't have to be. A novice turn is look at what's coming off. It's coming off in ribbons, squigglies. Now, and look at the, the finish on that I piece. Is I will take, I'll take pieces of fan paper the whole sheet and I'll staple them together. And so I've got 150, 220 and 320. And that's, I just staple it together and then cut them in strips. And that's all I'm gonna do with this guys. And I don't take a whole lot of time in doing it. We're gonna go through the entire sanding process here for you. That was 150. That was 220. That's 320. Now at that point, I will stop the lathe and I'll take the 320 and I'll just do this all the way around. Why do I do that? Because if there is a scratch, if it's going with the grain, nobody's going to notice it. That's sanded. This is a little cup of walnut oil. Well, not much walnut oil. It's mostly empty, but you'll see exactly the brush has more in it than what's in the cup. One that oil is food safe. It is. I'm gonna put a little walnut oil on there. I'm not gonna let it set long. I'm gonna turn the speed up a little bit and I'm just gonna burnish it in just a little bit. And guys, one important thing to mention here too, I don't finish the inside.
My beeswax is, uh, you know, let's just say it's getting a little low there. And I'm just going to come up along that with the beeswax. Trying to speed up just a little bit more. And all we're doing is heating that up and letting it get into the wood. Once we've got that done, we're going to come in and I'm going to part off just a little bit of high. I'm going to leave just a little bit of a nub on there on purpose. The reason I do that is I want to sand that off. By doing that, I'm going to take my power sander. I'm just going to hit the end of that just a little bit. Remember that rag I used with the uh, walnut oil and the beeswax? I'm just going to kind of work that in there. Now here comes the foam part. I think we're done with that. Can you get it apart? Probably not. Let me show you something. That sandpaper I showed you a while ago has kind of a rubbery back. You can do the same thing with shelf liner. You can do the same thing with those little grabby things you use to open jars in the kitchen with. But I just take and wrap that around there. Open it right up. There you go. Now, wait a minute. That's a little too tight for a customer to have to do. Once you put it on there and take it off a couple of times, you don't need the sandpaper anymore. And guess what, Brenda? You won't <laughs> have to paint that one. Brenda, Folks, don't put any super glue there when you put it back together. You saw how quick that went. And that's talking about it and doing a demo at, at the same time. I'm going to try again. <laughs> did, you, did you finish the inside or do you at all put I anything do, on the inside? I don't put anything on the inside. Okay. And I try to take out what's in there, that sawdust, you know. But the thing about it is, if you don't put anything on the inside, you don't have to worry about it interacting with somebody's medicine or getting their $100 bills all oily and stuff. And I hate it when that happens, you know? Oh, yours get oily too? Well, if I ever had one, Captain, it might. <laughs> I had one a long time ago. It was silly. It had three numbers on it and all that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, before you get away, Ronnie wants to jump in. He's got a tip for folks. Hey, Ronnie, you back in here again? Ronnie, you need to talk. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, it takes me a second to unmute myself. D, yes, when, you, when you were trying to get your truck off your lathe, you, yes, took, you took your handle that you normally tighten your lathe with, or you went... Or, or you went grabbing for something. Eddie, do you have me up? There, there we are. If you can see this, this is called a spanner wrench. Yes, sir. And what you do, you go to you, anybody that sells natural gases, whether you acetylene, oxygen, or anything else, and that's your best bet to, to, to get one. This is a this is a four-inch spanner wrench. And I gave, gave one of these to Eddie and I gave one of these to my neighbors. And what you do, you chuck. 
when you go to get your chucks off or putting them on, the hole that you would normally tighten your uh, chuck with, it fits right in there, wow. and you're and you're able to tighten your chuck onto your lathe. Or I like that lathe. idea, and I don't know why I hadn't thought about it. And I'll message you my address as soon as I get back in the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only thing I can tell you is go to a natural gas supplier, acetylene, oxygen, anything else, and tell them you want a four-inch spanner wrench. Yes, sir. And it's been many years since I worked in the chemical plants, but we used to use those things. Right. And just to let everybody know, let's see where, where it is, these little tips right here. Not that you would use or break them off with your chucks, but we used to break them off using them connecting uh, uh, pipes together. You break these little tips off, these tips are replaceable. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, this is, this is a great tool and what we use it for, you'd never put that much pressure on it to put your chuck on or to take it off. And they and they really work good. Eddie, <laughs> let me show these folks one more thing for I show right. them for the night. Jacob's chuck, chuck key. You can't lose it. Oh, trust me. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> just stick the handle in there and just snug it down and when you find the chuck you'll have the key the problem is is you don't see the key and you keep looking for the key even though it's right in your chuck <laughs> I, okay I so it happened to somebody experience. so it happened to somebody else all right i feel better now exactly exactly <laughs> Dean, great demonstration, sir. Thank you, Fantastic. Sir. A lot of tips and tricks. So, okay, you, if you don't want to do a, a, a little slim case like that, uh, I don't, I don't talk about any, any other turners. You don't want to do a little slim case like that. Take his concept and go with it. I mean, just there's nothing about size and all this. Just take it and go with it. All the techniques he showed you, Drilling a hole, drilling the counter hole, building the, the mortise, fitting the tenon, um, how you held it, how you finished it, how you spun it. That doesn't change with the size. So if you're looking to create something, a quick project, I got a whole bunch of inch and a half by inch and a half turning lumber, and I want to make a, a little bit larger one. Go for it. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Land Brady said uh, Amazon's got that Chuck Spanner wrench. And the information is in the, on the chat tonight. And if you don't get this, uh, folks, copy the chat before you leave. And if you miss it, our webmaster, our master webmaster, puts it on our website each week. But a great oh, demo. Well, Thank you, Dean. What he put Thank up there was, was for the, uh, the Nova Chuck tool. Does oh, the that's same the job. Nova. Is it the yeah. same thing? No, it's a little different, but it does the same job. Okay. Yeah, click on the link and you'll see it. It looks different. All right. But it's or commercially make... designed the same way. That's not required for Bickmar chucks. They they have a little hole already drilled in the, the back side of the chuck and provide a writing pin to be able to pull it off. Like a lever bar. Yep. All right. Yeah. The one way you got that also for their mm -hmm. their older jams. On the back side of the Bickmar, that's what that hole is for there on the collar that goes over the spindle. Again, thank you, Dean. Mark Clarkson wants to ask a question to Dean. Dean, you have to take a question from United Kingdom. Dean? Are you, you're muted. You're muted, Dean. I've become shy on us, Dean. Okay, <laughs> yes, you know I'm bashful, Martin. <laughs> Dean, can I just say that was that was fantastic and absolutely well done for your recovery. Um, the question I have, the, the, the thing that interests me most, and especially because we've got we will have some new turners here, and it's always it's always difficult when a demonstration gets done and something goes wrong. 
I just want, I want to ask, where did it go wrong? When that box broke, did you go through the side of it or was there too much pressure on the tailstock or were you going too deep? Just to get some of the new guys to understand what, what the elements could go wrong. Okay, there's a couple of things. And one of the things that I noticed, Martin, when I was rounding that off is I think we were just off center a little bit right. because I, it should have been round and I still had a pretty good size flat spot. Yeah. So when, when I went back in to go ahead and go a little further in to remove that flat spot, at that point, we yeah. cut into the, uh, well, basically we made the outside smaller than the inside. Oh, we, wow. We can't do that. <laughs> I, I heard that that's not the best uh, plan. No, no, so we need to avoid doing I can that. totally, totally understand that one. I was just, <laughs> I, I, like I say, I think with there being so many turners and some of the guys will be, will be new, I just wanted to understand where it, where it went wrong and the elements that could have gone wrong. I didn't think your tailstock was too tight. And I also was quite surprised when you had the, when you had the square, you really weren't far off square. It wasn't like it wasn't in the chuck properly. So right. even for me, I would have liked to have understood when it when it did give way, why it gave way, whether it was just an element within the wood, whether the tailstock was too tight, whether we'd gone and met the inside with the outside. Um, and, and that's that that you've totally explained. Thank you very much. Martin, and really I want to thank you for asking that question because that's important for every one of us. Yeah. And there's not, I mean, I'm not going to say there's not a mistake I haven't made because I still oh. make them and I'll continue Thanks. to make them for years to come. But when you make one, figure out what happened. Dean, Normally, I always say the cheapest way not to make mistakes is to learn from everybody else's. Exactly. And there is so many turners and so many programs like this where they don't tell you what went wrong. And I just wanted to kind of highlight, hey, this guy has recovered, but something went wrong. What went wrong and how can we not do it? Exactly. Um, and, and that's answered the question. And I've, I've kind of thought that you were possibly off center and you'd gone through one side because you did have a massive flat, even though your square yes. was quite good. You, you had that big flat and, it was and, and I'm not real big. sure how we ended up with that flat, but it, it was, I'm it sure was that's big. what happened. Yeah. Yes. Super job. Thanks Dean. Thank you, Martin. Appreciate the question and hope somebody picked up something from that. Definitely oh. did. Definitely we did.